What's up, Reapers? Welcome to another episode of my channel, Alex for Corals. And I'm Alex Wilson, your host, rec recording from Bakersfield, California. And today I would like to talk about the ideal nutrient levels in your reef aquarium, specifically the ideal nitrate level and the ideal phosphate level to have the best colors and the best coral growth. Now, and generally speaking, or relatively speaking, you want the, the higher side of the nutrients will give you better, co better colors and better growth. And on the lower side, like getting down to what they call the ultra low nutrient systems that is popular among many of the European reefers, they'll have a lot of the corals will be more on the, on the palish side and pale colored corals and they probably could use a little bit more nutrients on those systems. Um, if you look at, so nitrate, the recommended levels uh, for most hobbyists is nitrate from one parts per million up to a five parts per million. Now, and then the phosphate from 0 0.03 parts per million up to a 0.1 parts per million. Now, if we look at, at nitrate specifically, nitrate in the ocean is on average uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.7 parts per million, and that's pretty low, um, I, in, in my perfect ideal, and um, it's, it's a, little on the, a little harder to test for, but uh, people have generally reported, you know, good coral growth and good coral results with nitrate, you know, at there from one parts per million up to five parts per million. I believe Mike Paletta, you know, he said it best on, on Reef Bum with, with Keith Burkelhammer that uh, there seems to be more and more evidence that a lot of people are having a lot oh, better colors and better growth going from five parts per million nitrate all the way up to 10, 10 parts per million nitrate. So, uh, I, you know, anything above 10 parts per million nitrate is um, probably isn't healthy for the corals and probably doesn't, um, well, have, certainly have more algae issues with that. Um, I know that Thanthine over there at, at Tidal Gardens, he certainly is, is around now. Higher nutrient levels, especially nitrates, way up there. But um, I'm sure if he got them down, that his corals would do even better than they are right now. Um, but it's also, uh, you know, the corals, they, they absorb a lot of their nutrients uh, from the food that they capture. You know, they, they, in, in addition to, to absorbing nitrate directly. So... You know, a lot of from the zooplankton. It's kind of interesting. I heard that corals they evolved from deeper waters, and then, you know, then they still exist down there. Um, the ancestors to the, the photosynthetic corals, and that you know they evolved up towards the the shallower waters, you know, and eventually evolved the symbiotic relationship with the zooxanthellae algae, right? Uh, so that that's one of the reasons why a big part of their diet is from prey capture, you know, and they've evolved to do that at, at night. At night, we've seen, you know, a lot of the, the corals, um, especially because there's more zooplankton present and everything, and they'll switch over to to uh, feeding mode with all of their tentacles out and ready for prey capture and everything, right? So, um, so phosphate... Um, in the ocean is on average at 0 0.01 parts per million and that's way down there it's really hard to test for as I understand it and so in the aquarium environment uh, people have reported good coral growth and good coral results um, anywhere from 0 0.03 up to a 0 0.0 I mean 0 0.03 up to a 0 0.1 parts per million in phosphate so, you know, anything above 0.1 parts per million phosphate probably isn't healthy for the coral and probably a little too much algae growth. Um, so we also have the test kits for the nitrate phosphate for, for hobbyists that we use. And um, I, I have the, um, the Hannah as well as the um, Milwaukee that are good and the digital ones are probably the best um, There's also the ICP tests now 
there, which stands for inductive couple plasma testing method, basically. And um, so it's where you get your aquarium water sample, right? And send it into a laboratory and they'll test it and do an analysis and send you the results back. And uh, especially if note, you know, all the, the trace elements and the, and the nutrients, phosphates and nitrates and silicates. And um, we're also doing like you could uh, an organic, uh, dissolved organic um, studies possibly on that. And um, so one of the guys, one of the companies that does that is Fauna Marine. And it's pretty good, but I understand at least right now they're not doing nitrates on their nor alkalinity. So that Triton method uh, or the Triton um, ICP test is is probably the best option out there right now and uh, here that's done by uh, Joe Caparata you know and his team over there at, at Unique Corals so they'll they send them over there and then uh, Smart and they do a really great job on, on that and uh, there's also the, the last option is to use the uh, uh, the controller systems to, to test for nitrate and the one that's offering that right now or is the GHL ion director that can automatically test for nitrate, which is just absolutely amazing um, invention. And I look forward to using that on my new system coming up. And as well, we're looking forward to, to that same thing, but having it automatically test phosphate. That would be the next huge big invention thing to have it on there is the automatically test phosphate on the system that's the second most in, one of the most important things to be able to test for so that's a huge um, move forward I believe and um, if GHL will probably get it eventually and uh, I'm sure uh, there will be uh, lots of others will be soon to follow and in the years to come I believe um, anyway I, uh, I guess that's that's about it for this episode and uh, look forward to the next one Keep briefing, guys. Bye.